right, let's uh, have a look at some of the features we can, uh, some of the things we can do with uh, NEFX uh, as part of the PD Pro pipeline. You may have seen this video and a few others that I recently posted on our channel on Carrara and 3D animation. And it's got some, uh, let me go reduce the sound here a little bit. Uh, it's got some, uh, some 3D terrains and animations and some of that done in PD Pro Howler and some of them in Carrara. And what I'd like to do is perhaps go to the last one here and we fly around this monolith. And that particular segment I'm going to isolate. I have it here somewhere. And uh, it's, I think it's this one here. <coughs> and what we'll do is we'll load that into uh, Dog Waffle, into a PD Pro a Howler as an animation. So that's an AVI animation. That's how you load it right here from the animation menu. And you go load AVI and you load the file you want, right? So <coughs> this one. Um, I've loaded here and we can go and play it, perhaps set the frames per second to say I want to see it at 30 frames a second and play that. All right, so here it is. So now maybe <coughs> we want to work on the entire clip or maybe just a portion of it. So one thing you can do is uh, identify a starting point and an end point that you want to keep or perhaps to the contrary, what you want to cut out. So as you scroll up through that, uh, maybe we can say we want to end we, this part here at the end we want to cut out so maybe from here we'll mark the in point and then we'll go to the end here and mark the out point so that's the in marker and out marker we can actually see them here somewhere <coughs> I'm sure if you scroll up through it there you go it will have identified a small portion that starts right here with the beginning frame uh, <coughs> so this blue section here is this one here um, where we start that segment and now you just right click here to go and delete that block. So basically the in and out marker identify a block of frames and you can now go delete that. You can also cut it, but it will keep it in memory or in, in, in on, on the drive in, in cache. Um, if you really don't need it anymore, you, you don't want to copy it somewhere else, just go and delete it, that'll be a little bit faster. So we've deleted those frames. <coughs> There's a few more perhaps on the front side we'd like to delete as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go in marker here. And so that's the very first frame. Let's go see that right there, we're on the first frame. And then maybe we'll delete to that point here. So we'll select out. So we now have that selection here too. And there you go. And so this, this will be our first frame that we keep. Or oh, that's the last one that we actually delete. So we can again, right click here and delete that block. Or you can go to uh, animation and under the frames sub menu, you'll find the same, same menu items that you see here when you right click on the timeline. So let's go and delete the block. Where is it? Right there. <coughs> and so once we have that, you have the frame sequence you really want to work with uh, to do some additional post work. So uh, there's a couple of things we could do here. One is perhaps color enhance. Another one is perhaps some fog filter to give it a little bit of a misty look towards the bottom. Maybe a, a sky a sunset look, a reddish look towards the top. So a variety of filters and most of the filters are for single images if you select them here. But there's also the animation timeline right here. And there's a shortcut to that right over here. So that one allows you to select very similar filters, but they're not going to apply just on one frame. They're going to apply on the entire frame sequence. Let me use the shift control here and move that a little bit to the side. And right here, first thing I'll do is I'll look for some of the photographic filters. And there you go. So we got light diffusion, fog filter. Let's apply that one. So you can see here in the preview, it's getting a little bit of a bluish tint. You know, by comparison here, it's still kind of warm, brownish or reddish. Whereas here it's getting a little bit of a bluish tint towards the bottom half. And so that, uh, let's go and apply that. This parameter, this filter doesn't have any parameters to choose from, <coughs> but it's going now through the entire frame sequence. And there you go. And now you can do that again, right? You can, you can apply it the second time and that will make it even more, um, foggy look and it's a good idea if you're experimenting with that for the first time to keep this checked here the save undos so that you have the option to to actually undo that it's one level of undo over the entire frame sequence so it, it will keep the old frames in a temp folder before it modifies them <coughs> and then if you decide you didn't like it you can undo that right if you uncheck that you wouldn't have that option anymore all right and then so let's go apply that and see if that's too much fog or if we we think we want to do it uh, that way. Yeah, that's good, that's still good. All right, so now we have some other filters. Perhaps we can add a little bit of a sunset filter. Uh, day for night is pretty cool too. That makes it look like uh, eerie dark. 
um, kind of a, you know, switching from daylight to night time. Um, then there is a sunset filter that gives it a little bit more of a reddish tint towards the bottom. So it's kind of the counterpart to the fog. The fog makes it a bluish cold look to the bottom. The uh, sunset makes it more of a reddish look warmer to the top. So let's do that and apply that. Now that one, <coughs> let's see, did I set that? Yeah, the sunset filter. You actually have some parameters for that one. You can change um, the colors, not only on the top side, but also the bottom. So you can actually make it even stronger uh, fog to the bottom and you can uh, give it a lot more reddish or if you want to pretend you're on a different planet you know you can give it a, a very different maybe a, a greenish look there um, you know some some Venusian atmospheric uh, poison gas up there so let's go render that <coughs> and um, let's see a couple of other things. Yeah, some sometimes uh, you need to increase the contrast or the brightness, and uh, you can do that on the entire image right there from the uh, image menu. Uh, it's called the expand uh, dynamic range, and that can help also if, if uh, you know the range is not fully stretched, and so that gives you a little bit better contrast. That's ha that has an option to apply over just one frame, or then the entire frame sequence. Um, so now let's go into uh, Pixelan and add some sn uh, snow or rain to that. All right, so to do that, I'll go to the filter and look for, uh, for uh, all plugins. All right, and uh, because uh, any effects from Pixelan is a, a plugin that's added, and you can have it as a filter, and that would be a static image, static filter for a single image. Whereas if you go to Miscellaneous, you'll see the animated version, any effects animation. Right. And so you can launch it from here. And what it does is um, give you a preview of what that filter does uh, as you apply it. And now you need to choose which filter you want. So what you do is you go right here to where's the, the folder of all the different uh, settings. And you'll see a preview here. Let me grab it and move it in. You'll see a preview of the chosen filter. Now I have one that was snow. I'm going to go to rain this time and choose it. And you'll see a preview here. Uh, of the rain falling and uh, let's go and open that so now we have the rain coming down here pretty hard now maybe I want the, the speed a little bit less but I want the wind coming in from one side or the other side so something like this um, or just a little bit more vertical and then the length of those rain drops right so you can have it go make it look like it's very fast drops a little bit of rain or a lot of rain Right, and then the opacity of those raindrops. Look at that, that's pretty neat. Just a tiny couple of those. And then chaotic, how chaotic is that alignment? <coughs> and the size of the drops, or the, the intensity of them, uh, the opacity, all sorts of parameters. And you can, you can keyframe those too, you can change them. So over time, for instance, if the direction needs to change, you could, like, as you turn around this monolith, Right. Initially, the rain comes from the right, then it should come from behind us or above us, and then it should kind of turn to the left, so going the other way. So let's do that. Let's go to, uh, you see these keyframes you have here, you can go, that's the direction, uh, no, where is it? Um, <coughs> I guess it's the wind parameter that we need to play with. So let's go click on that, and we'll see that pop up. Let me move it in so we can see it. And so we'll do that for the first frame. Uh, we'll have the wind at this level here and uh, we'll get set a keyframe right there right and then so <coughs> that actually we needed a little bit more to the right uh, something like this at the beginning frame right so keyframe it there and then we go to the middle of the frame and by now it should have uh, reached a value like this right you can actually grab it right here this graph here is really convenient to just grab it and then keyframe it there and then um, towards the end of the animation, you can actually go right there, it will have moved all the way to the other side. Something like this, right? And keyframe that. So now we have an animation where the, the rain direction seems to be turning around as we go around in our camera and start looking in the other direction, right? So let's go do that and apply that. So how do you apply that? You simply go check here, right? And when you check that, it's going through the entire frame sequence and applying that filter any effects by Pixelan working right now with hardware acceleration. So this will not work if you have an old computer that doesn't support DirectX, what is it, 9 or something. So you, it's good to test it first with the demo version, which is free and um, available at any, anyfx.info. 
Um, and you can then um, verify that you have a PC with a graphic card that's uh, fast enough and has the features needed to support the uh, NEFX plugin. And, and then you can use that. There are some free versions. The, the demo version is free, and there's a couple of filters that you can use for free. Uh, but there's a, a whole lot of uh, great capabilities and features in there. So let's see what that does. In the end here, we have uh, an animation where we go around. And of course, another thing we could do is uh, perhaps create a, a mask so that the rain only falls in the background. That would be perhaps another pass if we wanted to show the rain, uh, really dense rain, but fine in the background. We'll do that in another demo. That would be using the rotoscoping capability. Uh, let's just see what that looks like here now and play it. And we can see that the rain is turning around <coughs> as we uh, turn around the entire 3D scene. Yeah, I guess this rain we could have probably make go a little bit faster in terms of the speed of the raindrops. And now, how do you undo that, by the way? If you, if you need to go back, you know, we didn't render that in our timeline editor. Well, but we do have in the timeline still a memory of the prior image. So we can actually hit undo and it will go back to the prior version, which should undo the rainfall we had there, All right? And there it is. So you can actually recover that too, but still the most, um, the most important thing to do really is to save often, right? So you want to go here and save often. And when you do that, select your folder and, you know, this is maybe phase one and save it. And then that way you'll have in no time a backup you can always go back to. This is a pretty uh, disk intensive save. It's, uh, it's uh, not compressed. It's a very fast one to load back in. So for instance, if you free this or if you do something else and you mess it up and you, uh, you can't use it anymore, you need to go back to it. You can go and open it. Uh, very quickly, here's phase one DWA dog waffle animation, and there you see took no, barely any time to load. Um, it's very fast to to re reconstruct or to restore from that, and that's how we work with uh, NEFX uh, from Pixelon as a plugin to add more pizzazz to your animations.